I'm just going to make you a promise. We'll get to the Bible in a little bit, okay? So just kind of hang on to it. We're going to review. Y'all give the band a hand. Thanks, guys, James. Thank you. So very good tonight, man. I felt the presence of God. Woo. Thank you, Lord. You know, Sunday morning, I talked about what is, what is driving you. So tonight, you know, I got a lot of response from that. I want to get back on that. There's a lot of things drive people. Uh, and as we move into this year, I want, I'm going to tell you what should drive you. By the time I finish tonight, I want to give you some things that you put it right down. You put it in your phone. You put it in your Bible. Write it somewhere. But these are the things that I want you to be driven by. And many of you have heard these before, but we're just going to put them all together. But we talked about on Sunday, some people are driven by guilt. Amen. They, you know, they spend their entire lives running from regrets or hiding their shame. Some people are driven by resentment. And this, when we hit this on Sunday, I want to tell you, there were, there were tears in the house uh, as we moved through this message, as we talked about it. But, you know, the other thing is, is that I believe that there are people being, that this is a great year that you forgive, that you break free from that. Don't let you, you know, we blame so many other people on so many things. that They can't change our narrative. We can change our narrative. You know, we can turn it around by making sure, hey, I'm not going to allow that. I'm not going to allow, you know, I'm not going to clam up, not going to blow up, not going to explode. I mean, some people are driven by fear. We talked about that on Sunday. That fear is one of the driving for, you know, fear drives the pharmaceutical industry. Fear drives our hospitals. Fear is actually driving our government right now. Fear drives a lot of things, but it doesn't have to drive you. Amen. You can live by faith in the name of Jesus. Can you get amen? amen? Of course, some are driven by materialism, the gain to get. Amen. And again, my prayer is that by the time I expire from this world, most of my stuff's either been given away or promised to someone or taken care of. I just want to, you know, just kind of get out of here without having, you ain't got to have a lot of stuff. Amen. Just make sure you use your stuff for the kingdom. Some people are driven by the need for approval. And I, I don't know all the keys to success, but one key to failure is to try to please everybody. I love when Jesus said, nobody can serve two masters. You're going to have to make up your mind. You know, even Bob Dylan took that into a song and said, you got to serve somebody. He may be the devil, it may be the Lord, but you got to serve somebody. I love Bob Dylan, you know that. He may recorded in Muscle Shoals, Alabama. Hallelujah. Speaking of Alabama, no, we won't talk about them right now. Amen. But there are other forces that can drive people's lives, but all lead to the same dead end, unused potential. You know, I've told you many times how many times I've walked through cemeteries and thought to myself, is the, is the cure of cancer in the cemetery? How many songs are in the cemetery? How many unwritten poems are in the cemetery? How many uh, uh, opportunities to say goodbye are in the cemetery and it didn't get to happen? Amen. So it's so important to make sure that you use your potential while you're here. Uh, unnecessary stress, you don't need that. You sure don't need an unfulfilled life. And Isaiah talked about this when he said, I have labored to no purpose. I have spent my strength in vain and for nothing. Job said, my life drags by day after hopeless day, and I give up. I am tired of living. Leave me alone. My life makes no sense. And again, I said this to you about Job. Don't give me this thing as your sad sack ideas that, you know, I'm ready to give up because maybe I lost a job or I split up with somebody or this happened. Job lost 10 children. He lost all his economy. His life was destroyed. Amen. He was sitting in a, in a heap of ashes, scraping his balls. And then that's when he said, I give up. I'm tired of living. And the truth of the matter is, if you live long enough on this earth, you're going to make that statement. Amen. You're going to say, I'm, I'm tired of living. What's sad right now is the suicide rate has gone up to such a high extent because of our quarantine and isolation and the people feeling like they've given up hope. Amen. So we've got to have hope. And we talked about Sunday about living on purpose. I call it the why factor. Amen. Again, the greatest tragedy in life is not death, but life without purpose. God's purpose for man. What is it? If you don't know your purpose, it's impossible to fulfill it. Thus, this year, and I had people walking out of, but I know in the second service, said, Pastor, I'm going to pursue my purpose this year. I want to find out what it is that God put. He put me here for a reason. I'll tell you, I'll be straight up with you. Lady walked by me Sunday. She had her throat cut from ear to ear. She had a former boyfriend bust through her door with a 9 millimeter shoot up her house. Tried to take her life. Shot her. Uh, the, uh, uh, I mean, it was, it was the most tragic thing that I have been a part of. And then he shot himself with her daughter on his back. And when the bullet went through his head, it grazed the daughter's uh, eyebrow. You know, he was so demented, so demon-possessed, and so bad. And she walked by me, healed up from her scars, emotionally dealing with life, and she said, God left me here for a reason. 
Amen. I got to find out what my purpose is. Amen. That's when you know you're catching this and, you, and you're learning it and you're figuring it out. Amen. So then you begin to release your potential when you do that. So the scripture clearly defines God's reason for creating you. The creator created you. Amen. Again, you didn't come from gas. God created you. And by doing that, he put you here for a reason. Now, here it is. Amen. He created you to express his image. Genesis 1, 26. Let us make man. Everybody say man. man. Say the word man. man. It's not a hard word, is it? Amen. 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 Well, I was so put off by that knothead in Congress praying. That wasn't a prayer. That was a political statement he was trying to make to promote Pelosi and Schumer and the rest of them knuckleheads. Amen. There's no such thing as amen in a woman. Amen just simply means to be so. It has nothing to do with gender. Amen. They're trying to make everything about gender. It just drives you up the wall. So I love the scripture. Let us make man in our image. I, I've never heard a woman get mad at God because he didn't say let us make woman in our image. Amen. You know, we all know man showed up first. It happened. Man showed up first. We all know that man needed help. We all needed, we, man was useless by himself. He couldn't figure out what to do with his fingers and which one went up his nose to pick his booger. He didn't know how to handle life. So then God pulled a rib from him and created womb man. Amen, which means wombed man. I was kidding with uh, uh, James's wife, uh, uh, Annie Barnes. You know, and, and it just hit me when I walked in and I hugged little Annabelle and Emily and I thought, look at these kids, they were born in a barns. God needed woman. He needed woman to procreate. Amen. Just make things happen in life. And, and so it's important. So I, I've never heard a woman get disgusted because it didn't say she was. She's created in his image too because she came from man. Amen. So it's very important. So expressing God's image has to do with the way you act, not the way you look. So when I act a certain way, I'm expressing his image. What is the image of God? I'm fixing to give it to you. 1 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 4. Now, the scripture says God is love. Is that right? We all agree, God is love, and though then, therefore, love is God. So I can take the word love out of this passage and put God in it and show you over and over again that this is the image of God. If you want to portray the image of God, and that's why God created you, you're driven to do that. First is, is that God is patient. Thank God he's patient. I'll give you another word, long-suffering. Amen. He suffers long with us. Hallelujah. He deals with our nonsense. Amen. For the second, God is kind. Kindness is a powerful trait to have, to be kind. You don't always have to be kind. You can be mean if you want to, but if you want to be in the image of God, you need to be kind. He does not envy. Mm -mm. God's not envious of anything we've done here. God doesn't look down here and go, man, I wish I'd have built that. I wish I'd have thought of that. Hey, man, I wish I'd have figured that one out. Wow, look at that. They got a rocket going all the way to the moon that I created. Amen. Hey, God is not envious. Amen. Hey, God does not boast. He doesn't need to brag. Creation cries out who he is. Yeah. Amen. He's magnified by that. God is not proud. There's no arrogance in God. Amen. He has no need of it. So in our own life, these are things. That, how many know we fight these things? We fight pride and envy and things of that nature. So if I'm creating the image of God, I've got to remind myself that God's not rude. Mm. He is not self-seeking. He is not easily angered. Thank you again, God. He keeps no records of wrongs. Amen. The scripture says love keeps no records of wrong. Reminding us what God keeps no records of wrong. When he forgave you of your sin, that's you that keeps bringing it back up. That's the devil that keeps bringing it back up. But God forgave you of your sins and he keeps no records of wrongs. I mean, he doesn't have a file cabinet with your name on it. Doesn't have a, uh, we're not going to get to heaven and there's going to be a DVR of you. <laughs> doing and saying dumb stuff. Amen. If you ask God to forgive you, can I get an amen? amen? Amen. God does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. Amen. And then the big one. He always protects. Amen. He always trusts. Amen. I've often found out this about God. I, I've taught you over and over that we love people and trust God. But the issue is, does God trust you? See, the whole, the whole principle of tithing is, does God trust you with giving? The whole issue of faithfulness is God trusts you with what he gave. Stuart to give you the stuff that he gave you. Amen. God looks at you and says, now can I trust you? Now if I can trust you, I can bless you with more. Amen. So this is what God does. So he always trusts, always hopes. Thank you, Lord. Amen. And he always uh, perseveres. God never fails. Amen. Look how I just took one word. It may, it's, they're synonymous. God and love. 
Amen. So now I see the image of God. So this year, I want to be more like the image of God. So when I look at Corinthians 13, I think about it. I realize I got, I got to work on not being rude. I got to work on not being envious. I got to work on uh, not being proudful. But I, I, need to, I need to trust God more. Amen. I need to persevere. I need to stay after things. And I, I, I got to do this. I can be more like God. So God made us to act like him and to f- reflect his nature. You may look religious. And some people can look religious. They act like the devil. And this is the bar that I would put them up against. Amen. The scripture out of Corinthians. The next one is, God created you to enjoy fellowship with him. As I was praying tonight, man, it felt so good, uh, H. Because he talked about if we dwell with him. Again, back into Psalm 91. If I can just dwell with him. If I can fellowship with him. You know, when God told Adam, he said, Adam, where are you? It's a rhetorical question. He knew where Adam was. Amen. He knew that Adam and Eve had, had messed up in the garden. Amen. And he came to him in the cool of the day. Why was that? Because God enjoyed fellowship. He created us for fellowship. And when you shut him out, when you shut him out from your job, when you shut him out from uh, business dealings, when you shut him out from family things, amen, that you're breaking his heart. He, he created you to fellowship. So when I'm coming over here, I'm praying. When I leave, I'm praying. Amen. I'm talking to God. So prayer is not just a, a, you know, something we do on Tuesday night. Thank God we do do that. But prayer has got to be something that's just part of your life. It's, it's communion, literally. Amen. It's why God created us. Therefore, the opportunity for fellowship was part of the reason God had created Adam and Eve. Fellowship is companionship, a mutual sharing of an experience, an activity, or an interest. There are times I will go do things, but I like sharing things. Last year, I got to go snowmobile. Never been on a snowmobile in my life. Oh, I want to do it again. I love things that go fast and slide. It's a part of my Dukes of Hazard hazard, uh, uh, heritage. Amen. I just love doing that kind of thing. So I got on a snowmobile. But it had been no fun by myself, Joseph, but to have my grandson and granddaughter and daughter with me. Now, that changed everything. Amen. There's something about sharing that. So when you go through life, remind yourself, I got to share this with God. Amen. When's the last time you said, God, wasn't that fun? Amen. God said, yeah, if it wasn't me helping you keep that motorcycle up on that curve, it would have really been fun, son. Amen. You've got to share things with God. You've got to talk with God about stuff. You know, that's why you get born again when God made you that way. He wants to experience this relationship. And the more you dwell with him, the more you grow with him, this is one reason why you're created. He created us to dominate the earth. Some people don't understand this. They get it backwards. They think it's a, a abuse. I don't. I think creating... when. I use this phrase a lot. God's original intention is his final decision. God's original intention is his final. When God decided something, in the beginning, he decided that it would be blood that would cover. Amen. When he took the skin of an animal and he covered Adam and Eve after the sin. He covered. God is a God of cover. Amen. He covers. He teaches us to cover one another. To, to, uh, uh, it's so important to not uncover, but to cover. Because under the cover is the healing. That's where God heals us. So God had a, an intention. God's first decision was this right here. Go back to that scripture there, Genesis. Then God said, let us make man in our image, in our likeness. Let him rule over what? The fish of the sea, the birds of the air, over the livestock, over all the earth, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. Why does God want us to take care of the fish and the, and the birds? Because that's where we get our nutrients from. I, mean, I believe God is all about us hunting. God is all about us sustaining life. Through, you know, eat, uh, whether it be chickens or, 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 or uh, ducks, whether it be I had fish yesterday. I had fish the day before yesterday. I'm having to learn how to eat fish. Amen. But I find out if you put enough butter sauce on it, you can just about eat anything. Hallelujah to Jesus. <laughs> Amen. So, so, and then livestock. To look after the livestock. Hallelujah. But the issue there is, is because the earth, the earth keeps regenerating. The earth keeps growing. Yeah, the earth, have you noticed that if you stop mowing the grass, it just keeps growing? Amen. It's going to keep growing. The trees are going to keep coming in. Amen. You know, and you don't realize that if you have half acre. But if you've got 110 acres, if you've got these five acres, you're mowing right here. Right. Amen. It just keeps on growing. It keeps on coming back. So you have to dominate the earth. If you leave it alone, uh, man-made stuff always rots. God-made stuff always grows. Isn't that weird? Amen. You leave a house alone in a man-made, it'll start falling apart. Paint start cracking. Amen. Boards start warping. Things start going out. But it, God's stuff, it just keeps right on growing. It keeps on nurturing. So you have to t- learn how to take d- dominion over the earth. That, that also means, it, also, it doesn't mean over one another. God never called you to be over somebody or to enslave someone. Right. Never called you to do that. Called you to be friends with them. You read Corinthians again. But for us, you know, uh, my dog, he needs to be trained. So I work on my animals. 
you know, when they're around. I, I'm, I'm looking after stuff around the properties all the time because I realize we, if we don't take dominion over it, it's going to over, overwhelm us. Amen. It'll press into you. Uh, financially. Here's the thing. God created us to dominate the entire earth. The problem with addiction to substance is the earth dominating us instead of us it. Substance abuse is something owning you instead of you owning it. Amen. And, and we're, we're moving into a time right now. You know, you never heard me talk about weed much. But I, I know that for some people, that has been a curative. It's been a blessing for them. Amen. Others that are just doing it for recreational stupidity. The scripture says take a little wine for your stomach's sake. Amen. Which means at times you've got an upset stomach and you take a little, a little alcohol. Amen. To settle the stomach. I've never abused anybody, told anybody you can't do that. But on the flip side, if you buy a 12 pack, you're going to have stomach trouble. <laughs> you follow the preaching? Amen. It's learning how to use things in moderation. It's learning how to use things properly. Again, I don't drink. And I don't, I'm not promoting drinking. I'm just telling you that there's a right way to do this thing. And you can't always use the scripture to justify your stupidity. All right. Money. Money is another thing you've got to take dominance over. You've got to learn how to control your finances. Amen. You know, we will kill, rob, steal, cuss, and do many other despicable things to get our hands on something made out of wood. A little bit of paper. Amen. Money. It's, it's crazy. But you've got to learn how to deal with it. I'm praying that you get debt free. You learn how to use your finances. You learn how to be a, a good giver. And also, one that knows how to uh, plant seed in the right places. Amen. To, be, to, to look after. Because as you get older, uh, you know, as, as you understand about retirement... You know, I, I, I'm looking at it. I'm saying, okay, God, what are we going to do as we get closer here? Yeah, after a while, death starts looking like a really good answer. Okay, I didn't mean that over here. <laughs> but, but the bottom line is, it, it, gets, it gets expensive to live. Amen, to stay with. So be wise for your finances. The lack of knowledge or the loss of insight into the purpose of a person or a thing always leads to confusion and pain. I'm very disturbed by what's going on in, uh, among our liberals in the White House, this gender issue. That's going on where I have to say honor my parents instead of honor my father and mother. Yeah, I have to talk about siblings instead of brothers and sisters. That we're trying to change. And this will get in your school curriculum. It'll be, it's already, okay, it's already there. Amen. God created woman as a suitable helpmeet for the man. He did not design the male to be a helpmeet for another man or a woman to be a helpmeet for another woman. Right. God was, and he never set that up that way. Amen. And, and again, it ain't your best life to be that way. So it's, it's not something, it's, but as a matter of fact, the purpose for man is woman. Anything else is abnormal use and denies who cre created them. Beware of the nonsense. When I say nonsense, you know what nonsense? You divide it up, it's no sense. It's just no sense. It ain't got no sense at all. Uh, and it blows my mind that it's allowed to keep happening. It's as if they got their own little world over there and they expect the whole world to bow to that. Amen. I don't even think that way. It, it blows my mind to think that way. We're created to bear fruit. And I, and I remember uh, a lot of teaching on this, Valerie, that you, we always like the fruit message. Amen. And dealing with I'm, I'm, in a, I'm in a jam. That's a good fruit message. Amen. Sheer love. How I many you know when God loves you, he shears you? Amen. He'll prune you. Hallelujah. John 15, 8. This is my Father's glory that you bear much fruit. Showing yourself to be my disciples. So believers, uh, believers uh, disciples, Christian disciples start bearing fruit. John 15, 16. You did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you to go and bear fruit. Fruit that will last. Then the Father will give uh, you whatever you ask in my name. Sam, vow your fruit will remain in this house. What you've done over the years, amen, at both churches, amen, it's going to remain. Fruit's important. It's important what we've done here. If your life consistently bears no fruit, God will intervene to disciple you. Excuse me, discipline you, which is also discipling. If you, if you just run along mundane, yeah, I'm saved, but you ain't bearing no fruit, you watch and see what God does. He will intervene into your life, and he'll make life a little messier you than you ever thought it could be. Because he's looking for you not just to bear fruit, much fruit, but more fruit. Amen. God's all about you getting fruit. Why? Is that because he created you to bear fruit? He, I've talked with my friend today, Rick Hawkins, and Rick just preached a message. It only takes one seed. <laughs> oh, you don't know about Rick Hawkins. He's 59 years old and got a 41-year-old wife and just had their first baby. 
Now, Rick got two other siblings in their 40s, and they both excited about the baby. But I talked to him about it today. And he said, Pastor, all, all it takes is one seed. I said, you know that little baby going to want another little child to run up, run around with? He said, ain't happening. I got him dogs. I got him two dogs to run with. Amen. I ain't getting that baby another baby. Amen. I just told a big old sack full of diapers out of his house. It ain't happening. One seed. One seed is all it takes. What, so why is it? What is that about? God made you to bear fruit. Amen. He created us to bear fruit. If your life bears some fruit, God will intervene to prune you. He'll start taking things away from you. Amen. Not that he's mad at you, but to prune something is to give it opportunity to grow more fruit. So he's not mad. He wants you to have more fruit. If your life bears a lot of fruit, God will invite you to abide. He invites you to come and just hang out with me. Amen. I want you to be fruitful. You know, to me, fruitful is always about witnessing. He that winneth souls is wise. Amen. Winning somebody to Jesus. Hallelujah. Uh, Helping somebody grow in Christ. Disciple somebody to pick them up. I don't want any of you to get to heaven and not have won somebody to Jesus. I'm glad you got them to church, but I want you to win somebody to Jesus. I want you to talk to them about Jesus. Amen. It's easy to testify about him. Amen. When he's done something in your life. So to remain in him is more deeply with him. To remain. Matter of fact, this scripture, 11 times and 11 verses. God is about us remaining, staying with him. And this thing about the virus bothers me because it has separated people from the body of Christ. Amen. We've got people that were strong members in this church in the very beginning. They're not part of it anymore. Amen. They've allowed themselves to say, I'm not going to remain, not going to stay. Now, my prayer is that they find somewhere else, and I have no animosity, meanness, or anything else toward them. I miss them. I miss people. Amen. But that's what this thing has done, is to begin to, to separate people where they're not remaining no more. A productive person is simply somebody who will respond to the demand. Amen. Just to respond to it. A productive person. If you want something done, find somebody that's producing. Because they'll respond to something that you ask them to do. Your fruit Fullness is related to the food you're eating. If your spiritual source is not of top quality, your productivity will show it. You know, I learned all last year, it's what I eat that's going to determine who I am. So I had to be careful what I eat. Amen. That's why I mentioned fish. My wife told me when I get home, I'm eating broccoli. And I said, that's fine as long as it's smothered in cheese. (laughs) Glory to God. Amen. I can do that then, you know. I mean... Yeah, you got to do something like that. So, so it's very important to me that, that I, I eat right. Spiritually, same way. You don't always eat from what you hear from the pastor. Amen. you got to decide what you're going to feed on throughout the week. Amen. What you're going to grow on. And last point, we're created to worship. And I so enjoyed worship tonight. Man, I enjoyed it. This people, I love Isaiah 43, 21. This people, God said, I formed for myself. I created them. They shall show forth my praise. I pray this year there'll be some cut loose inside of some of you. I'm telling you, I mean cut loose. Ho! Oh! Shout! A praise. I mean, I, I pray I got to back away and let you just run past me while you're in this building. Come on. Amen. So why am I running? We've been there, age. We've seen it happen. Amen. God created us to praise him. Oh, Crosby's going to the state playoffs. Glory to God. People shouting and jumping up and down. Come to church and you're the quietest as a mouse. It shouldn't be that way, amen? Let me tell you something. Come Monday night when Alabama starts whooping up on them Yankees from up north, I'll be shouting all over the place in the name of Jesus. When I come to church again, I'll be shouting again. Hallelujah. I'll never allow my love for my football team to outdo my love for Jesus. But I'm going to shout for both of them. And if I get too loud on Monday, get ready on Sunday because I'm going to be real loud. Amen. And to prove myself. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. As long as you got breath, you praise him. Amen. As long as you can breathe in and suck air, you can praise him. You can give him praise. So without a purpose, we talked about this. Purpose was so important in my life. It's the key to life. Without it, life has no meaning. Purpose is the why for the creation of the product. So why is the why so important? God created you for a reason. When elements of nature lose their purpose, chaos and destruction are the results. When elements of nature lose their purpose, chaos and destruction are the results. I read this and I think about where we're at as a, as a nation. When elements of nature lose their purpose, chaos and destruction are the results. When we begin to lose our purpose and we're taking purpose away from people. As a matter of fact, we're trying to tell them that the government is your purpose. Amen. The government will never be our purpose. I love our nation. I love our nation. Suspicious about the White House, but love our nation. Amen. When nations, when communities, when friendships, when churches, 
When marriages lose their sense of purpose and significance, then confusion and frustration set in. And what I call 3D vision. 3D vision is discouragement, disillusionment, then departure. First, they get discouraged. Second, they get disillusioned. And then third, they depart. Whether gradual or instant is going to happen. Amen. So purpose is so important in a business, in a marriage, in a community. And in our nation, in our churches, if we, be, if we begin to lose our purpose as a church to win the loss, to integrate the body, to nurture people, we start losing that, then our church is it'll just be a, a community building for people to come to. I want to win people to Jesus this year. I want to reach more people this year than I ever have. There are more people that they say that are dying because of this disease. They need Jesus. Amen. First, I'd love to get you healed and keep you here. But if you're not going to get healed and you're going to die, I want to make sure you get to be with Jesus. Amen. That, that's my thing, man. Some people say, well, I just, I just want to hang out here. The older I get, yeah, I don't know. As long as God gives me breath, as long as I keep his body moving, amen, I want to give it to the glory of God. Can I get an amen? Yeah. But look at that 3D vision. You understand 3D vision? You ever been to a 3D place? First time I brought my kids to a 3D movie, it was down at the, uh, them IMAX places, you know, and they had the dolphins and the whales. Back when it first came out, I mean, you had to put them big glasses on. And I'll never forget my son Josiah. As soon as we put the glasses on, he was a four or five year old. He'd go. <laughs> he reached out, and he was frustrated because he couldn't grab hold that well. And he'd take them glasses off, and everything got distorted. Amen. And that's what happens in life. You get, you get to a place when you lose purpose, then you, lose, you get discouraged, disillusioned, and then you depart. You defect. You walk away. Amen. So be driven. Be driven. What do you be driven by? This year, be driven. Amen. To express God's image. I just want to express. Remember, Corinthians chapter 13. I just want to express God's image this year. Second, amen. To enjoy fellowship with God. I just want to enjoy fellowship. Sometimes fellowship with God comes during the most sorrowful times of life. During the hurtful times, the suffering times, and you get fellowship with Him. I often find that if you fellowship with God in the good times, you've got a right to fellowship with Him in the bad. Amen. Third, to dominate the earth. Don't let things grow up around you. Amen. Learn how to handle your money. Learn how to handle substance in, in your life. Don't let things own you. Amen. Learn how to own things. Bear fruit. Bear fruit. That's witnessing, sharing the gospel with people, helping folk disciple. Amen. Helping folk grow in Christ. Bear fruit. You know, I, years, many, many years ago, I was told one time that my fruit would not remain. And here, that was 40 years ago when somebody told me that. And I still see fruit from 40 years ago. Amen. I had a guy call me today on the phone. Pat, and he sounded like, y'all remember Mr. Haney? He sounded like Mr. Haney. Just a little bit. I can tell you his name later. But he said, Pastor Gary, he said, God just called, told me to call you and tell you that he loves you. And I ain't talked to this guy in 20 years. But he said, I want you to know when you were preaching in Kenefic Church and you talked about the Goliath head and how David cut the Goliath head off and you stood on the front pew and you held the head up and you shook it in front of everybody and you rolled it down the aisle. I'll never forget that sermon as long as I live. <laughs> I said, well, I sure needed that phone call. I sure needed that phone. Boy, you brought memories way back. That's back when Lawrence was kicking around, you know. And they were there. I mean, it was a... That's a hoop to hear that. Yeah, and so I thought, you know what? Fruit does remain. Bear fruit in worship. Oh, let it be a year of worship. Healing comes in worship. Amen. Uh, salvation comes in your worship. All these good things come in your worship. So there are a lot of things that are going to drive you this year. Go try to drive you. Resentment, fear, materialism, all these things. Let these drive you this year. 2021, God, I want to express your image. They may not be proud or boastful or anything else. I, I want to make sure I enjoy fellowship with you. When I do things, I want to make sure that I invite you in. He says, or two or three are gathered together. There I am in the midst of them. He wants to be invited in uh, to dominate the earth. God, you gave me. When it would, and I love that. I love the thought of that. It was Miles Monroe that really pumped that into me to take dominion. Take dominion. Learn to take dominion over things. Don't let things own you. Don't just be a sheep. Be a lion. Be a lion. Amen. Learn how to take dominion over things. Amen. Bear fruit. Learn how to worship. Father, thank you for the word of God. Thank you for what we learned today. I thank you for the young people in the back, God, that are learning and growing. I give you praise for all the good things that come from you. You're a good, good father. 
And we're glad to be with your family. We ask God that we be driven by these things. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 H, if you go back over the bucket, if you've got a tithe or offering, amen, you'd like to put in. Will you tell Donald I'm prayed for him today? Amen. I love that man. Amen. I love him too. And I'm sure he'll be watching football this weekend, particularly on Monday night. Amen. We take on them Yankees. I am a rebel. Let me just say that straight up. Amen. I'm very frustrated. Again, this is a, you can take this off air right now if you want to. But I'm very frustrated. You know, Alabama, Mississippi, Ole Miss Rebels. It's like, to me, a rebel simply meant a rebel. You were from the South. And a Yankee was up north. And, and if you can still have the Yankees as a baseball team, amen, you should be able to have the Rebels as a football team. Amen. It just bothers me that we have gotten to a place where we're. we're, we're